although we're the architects for King's Place, in a way, when you are trying to describe the project, you have to start with the purpose of the project, because actually I think the purpose is the most interesting thing. And in describing the purpose, we have to go back to the person who's had those ideas, and that's the client, that's Peter Millikan, who I think has had a really unusual and interesting vision for this project. And that vision starts with taking a typical building type, that's the big office block, and saying that instead of it being a private building, a building that excludes people, it should be a public building. It should be part of the city, it should be part of all the activities in the city. And to make that happen, he's brought together a whole lot of arts, communal, public uses, and mixed them with the office block. And this is very, very unusual. Um, I don't know anywhere else in London it's happening. And in a sense, it, it, it presents a challenge to other developments to do something as good. Central Square was the first development I did after moving into running a property company. And it was an enormously satisfying experience, but, but a, a very big learning experience as well. It has been proved very successful, both um, architecturally and um, artistically and, 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 and financially in terms of the tenants that we've got in as, as, a, as, a, as a property investment. I very much like art and music. And I think that it provides a more holistic experience for the people that work in the building. I think it just enriches people's lives. Whilst there is a fair amount of art in the public spaces, both paintings and sculptures, I'd always fancied having a gallery in the space, but I just felt it would not work commercially in Newcastle. And for that, and for a number of other reasons, I fancied doing a building in London. Um, I was very committed to building round transport hubs, um, so I looked around King's Cross and Paddington um, for a building site and came across the Battle Bridge Basin. And looking across the basin, you could see that it was a large site with water on two sides of it, which would clearly make it an extremely nice place to have public spaces where the public could come, where artists could sit out there, where the office tenants could make use of it and the building on it was so appalling that one was perfectly certain that no one would object to knocking it down. The brief that I sent was to have a building which was office and arts that allowed public into the building and that worked in many ways. It had, it had to work as in a commercial sense, but I think that creating community is actually very important to the success of the building in the way I conceive it. And on top of that, getting an architect so sympathetic to that philosophy will add up to a very successful building, very successful development, very successful community, I think. It's the choice of the site presents quite big planning considerations. We're standing in an area which is very pleasant, canal side, we're on a towpath, there's a nice scale to it. So the building had to be designed in such a way it would fit in. So seen from this direction, it, to a certain extent, can be said to join in with the spirit of the canal side buildings and the warehouse buildings. Whereas on the other side, on the York Way side, we've made it a major public elevation, part of the larger city scale. We did lots of different versions of the project as we were working on it and eventually came to the point of view that what's normally seen as a single big building, an office building with a huge floor, could be broken up into pieces that are linked together. Um, that's what you see behind us. That is a cylinder next to two rectangles which are joined by bridges such that each floor works as a big office floor but the appearance is broken down into a series of smaller shapes when seen from the canal. It's very interesting to speculate why we were chosen for this project. I think Peter was interested in us because we've done arts projects, not because we've done office projects. He wanted, I think, people who knew about projects like so we've done the Opera House, we've done the National Portrait Gallery, Somerset House. He wanted people who had, had that experience rather than big offices. And indeed, it, it, in, in a curious way, the fact that we haven't done offices meant that we were open to new speculations about what an office should be like. This practice is a medium-sized practice. It's not very big. It's based on a personal partnership between two people, myself and Ed Jones. We've worked together. We've worked together for many years. 
and we designed together. This project indeed was designed jointly and that's how we work and it's absolutely central to the nature of the practice. Very often you have practices where the partner is, is very good at golf or, 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 or having lunch with pe people and the other person is left at home to do the drawings. We both do the drawings, we both chat to pe people, so I think we're very equal in that sense. I think Jeremy has taken quite a lead in this project over myself in that, that I think there's a relationship with Peter in the area of music that has developed a sort of particular relationship. In the case of King's Place, um, we worked on it in a typical manner. The competition we did absolutely jointly and all the work to do with the design. And there's a stage in the project, which is where you go for planning permission, which really freezes the design. That's where you can't change very much. And I'd say that joint relationship was absolutely central right up to that point. Ed Jones and I itself are both architects that use circular form in our work. We've done it lots of times. It's very interesting to see a big circular floor. And I think that will make a very good office space, an unusual office space. And I think if you look at the interpenetration of the spaces at the office floor level, they look okay, they look, they, they look good. And then as you look down into the atrium, you can see diagonally right through down past the ground floor and into the window of the rehearsal space. Now, I hadn't expected that, so people in the offices will be able to see an orchestra rehearsing, and I think that's pretty good. There is much more than just the initial design. There's getting the whole thing built, getting all the refinements done, and there's a team that works in parallel with us, and it's a constantly interactive process. So in this case, we have Richard Thompson, who is leading the project. He's the team leader here, uh, takes responsibility for what is a huge project and a bigger project than we've ever done before, so that it's a major responsibility. He has alongside him Justine Langford, another of our directors, and she has taken the role of looking after the exterior of the building, which is quite complex in this case and has a lot of very demanding work attached to it. And we are totally dependent on their expertise and devotion to the project for its realisation. Peter has introduced quite ambitious arts uses, starting off with music, the concert hall. Orchestras have been drawn into the picture, the Orchestra of the Age of Enlightenment, the London Sinfonetta. They require a rehearsal space, so we have now two music spaces. And then there's outreach and education and uh, practice rooms. And then on top of that, there's art galleries, sculpture. And because the public are going to be drawn into the building, there are restaurants, and those restaurants will have waterside eating. So the whole picture becomes a rich one of the large office block and the public coming in and using the building. I think when people enter the building on the ground floor, they will be really surprised by the scale of space devoted to public use. So they will walk, as it were, almost between buildings, as opposed to there being a kind of predictable atrium. You'll look up see bridges above your head to the various parts of the office floors. Then as you go downwards there are further bigger scale uses, the concert halls, the rehearsal spaces, the art galleries and quite a sort of dramatic interplay between them. That is the, the way of getting down to the concert hall is an escalator. We like escalators, we like the idea of public movement diagonally through spaces and all of this sets up all kinds of possibilities for the relationships between the arts, between sculpture, painting, music, food, um, formal activities and informal activities. <laughs> Many people have actually said to me that this is the nicest building I've ever worked on, which is a, an amazing thing for people to say. Both the people constructing it, the people designing it, consultants. It is, it is a very interesting building type just because it is very new ground and in terms of the mix of the arts and the offices and also because it's a great site, because it's a new part of the city, because there's a great atmosphere amongst the people working in it. it I, I think it has been an amazing experience, for me particularly it has.